welcome to the NBA Coast to Coast podcast brought to you by thelines.com. Coming to you from the West Coast, Josh Lander, joined as always by Nate Weitzer on the East Coast and a wicked, super hot Nate Weitzer right now as we both went undefeated last night on a pretty big Wednesday slate there, all coming back from that Tuesday off. 9-0 and on the night, Nate, 9.9 units on November the 9th. Feeling pretty good about how things are aligning here for us. Uh, like I said, 3-0 and on the play, a prop specifically 3.8 units there alone. So we'll continue to ride along. Probably would have had more, but Ben Simmons set out. So we only got three props in there instead of four. We got four for you right now. So continue to follow along. We also have best bets up for you, four <laughs> bets in that video. Uh, so check that one out and subscribe to that page if you would to continue to follow along all season. Also head to thelines.com. You can check out the great content we're putting up on the site right now and use the odds finder tool, prop finder tool, all that. Make sure that you're getting the best odds available to you for all of these play of props that you're betting on this season. Nate, let's go ahead and get into your player prop here a guy that i know we're both gonna be talking about yeah and it could be a best bet um basically just following the the narrative that Giannis is starting to get it going and is now going to be a little fresh after getting ejected last night on a pretty questionable second tech we'll take the over on his 44 and a half pra i would like to take him to be the top scorer in this game i don't see odds yet as long as it's minus 130 or better you know, I'll take it um, because I, I, I think Dame had to do a lot of heavy lifting down the stretch with Giannis ejected. And the Pacers are really a spread team. That's just that I don't really trust anybody to have a huge scoring total like Halliburton, in my opinion, maxes out around his prop of 21 and a half points tonight. So Giannis and Dame combined for 63 percent of the Bucks usage. They're combining to average over 50 points per game. Two other guys, Portis and, and Brooke, barely average double figures. And the Pacers have seven guys averaging double figures. So to me, it's a good value if you can get that bet on Giannis to lead them in scoring. Let's let's look at the matchup here. I mean, he has crushed the Pacers, 38.5 points per game, 13 rebounds, 7 assists on 39% usage, including a monster triple-double, his last trip to Indy in February. He has gotten double-digit free-throw attempts in seven straight meetings and averages 54 PRA in those meetings. I think the number's deflated because maybe early on Giannis was trying to defer, trying to get game acclimated a little bit to the Bucs. Maybe some discussion behind closed doors to say like, look, you got to get back to being the MVP you are. He goes for a 38% usage rate against Brooklyn, 36 and 12, 15 for 27 at the free throw line. This is a Pacers team that allows the second most, uh, third most free throws this year, allowed the second most last year, allowed a ton of, to power forwards, allows the most two-point field goals, period, this year, playing at the second fastest pace, Milwaukee's sixth in pace. So there's, it's not a coincidence that Giannis has put up big numbers against this team, um, and he was on pace for this prop for a second straight game before he got ejected, only 22 minutes against Detroit last night, and 29 PRA. So I, I think he gets there, and I think he probably can lead this game in scoring. I, I agree. I t- the, the ejection was hilarious. If you haven't seen why he got ejected, I highly re- recommend checking it out because he not only did the the flex, he also did the, like, you're too small, putting his hand to palm to the floor kind he of thing. He wasn't even done uh, doing that by the time he got the technical, though. It was just for staring him down. Yeah. I am not defending this referee. I assure you, rarely will you hear me defend a referee. Uh, I, I, there's no reason to kick anybody out. Like, let's chill out here. This is not the no fun league. This is supposed to be the NBA. But at any rate, uh, yeah, I'm just going to continue to follow along with what you're saying. It's six and a half points for him uh, in the first quarter as his prop. And I'm just going to take the over, even though it's minus 130 on DraftKings. Um, because like I said, I, I don't have this desire to start getting crazy on a weird little two-game slate. I just... I'm going to bank on him coming out and giving a shit a really, really big one in the first quarter. Um, and so that's why I'm going to just take this. I mean, he, he does average six and a half points uh, in the, in the first quarter of this season, both of these teams play at the fastest pace in the first quarter, top four pace for both of them. I mean, same for the whole game, but like in the first quarter, they come out bucks, not very good in the first quarter, to be honest with you, they have the 28th best offensive rating in that first quarter. However, I also think that it is like give Giannis the ball 
right away time. Like he's going to, he should be pretty pissed. If you're Dame, like it's kind of embarrassing that you were now the best player on the floor and you won by two against this Pistons team at home. Uh, so I think there's something to be said for Dame being like, yo, go ahead, Giannis, and, and do you. Uh, the Both of these teams, like I said, playing at this fast pace. The Pacers are not exactly playing great defense in the first quarter either. Um, down in, in the uh, bottom half of the, the league in terms of first quarter defense, actually fourth worst uh, overall in, uh, in the first quarter specifically. Because I think it's a lot of just come out and run and gun. That's why they've gone over in a lot of first half bets have the Pacers, which I believe you spoke about in the uh, in, in the other video, the best bets where we're talking about taking a first half in that game in general with an over. Same kind concept for this first quarter uh, that I, I think you're going to see like a 60 point first quarter Giannis playing a solid eight minutes like he normally does and getting uh, I mean look a little ladder here doesn't sound terrible either because you get such uh, a great low prop at six and a half you know once you get up to eight or so you're talking about plus money uh, even I think seven uh, and a half if you take over there right you're talking about even money so it's it's there's some some good stuff with Giannis there I think it's a, a solid attack here yeah absolutely I love that six and a half number in the first quarter based on the narrative we're talking about based the Bucks know they need to get off to a hot start um, and and that we love points early on in this game. We're taking the first half over in the best bets there. We're taking Pacers to maybe be up at the end of the first half, but Giannis will do his best to prevent that uh, as he comes out with fresh legs. So looking at this Hawks yeah. game, um, I'm going to take uh, Jalen Johnson over 12 and a half points or 19 and a half points in rebounds. You get much better juice on the points. It is a tough matchup against Orlando is why maybe you want to tack on the rebounds, even though they give up the fewest rebounds per game total. Uh, but they are 26th in offensive rating, so there should be misses here. And Jalen is boarding up at, at the power four position, 24% defensive rebounding rate, which is excellent uh, for a young guy. And the Magic, while they're good in a lot of areas defensively, they're league average in terms of opponents' two-point shooting and free throws allowed. But for me, this is more about Jalen starting to take off here. They just cannot keep him out of the line, out of the starting lineup or, you know, giving him 30 yeah. plus minutes per game. He is just such a better option uh, than anything else they have power forward. And and once now that they move John Collins, they, they can really see that he's averaging 14 and nine boards per game this year. His last two gone up to 35 minutes per game though, 17 points, 11 and a half rebounds and four and a half assists. So don't hate the 11 and a half rebounds assists here at plus money. And maybe you want to play it that way if you want better juice. Um, just a really good all-around player who's who's fitting in well as as you know, sort of the third playmaker alongside those two guards we talk about for the Hawks. And and just you know, while it, while it is a tough matchup on paper, I I think his numbers are a little low given the all-around production he's been putting up. Yeah, I like I like attacking this pick. I, I don't really know who else you trust on this team right now with the ball in their hands besides the two, the, the, you know, the two starting guards. So I think it's a pretty good bet to uh, assume that, you know, w when he is out there, um, even money, 13 points, even the points and rebounds. Cause like you said, he, he is going to need, be needed to, uh, to, to board up depending on when he's out there versus Deandre Hunter. So it, it's kind of a similar thing to what you said with the minutes, right. With, um, with uh, Capella versus Okongwu. But like if Johnson's going to be getting the, the minutes, the, the minutes and he's going to get the, the stats as well. So we'll see how it goes tonight. I, it probably will be a little bit faster pace as well, to be honest in this one, than you might think for an Orlando game. Uh, the Hawks are speeding everybody up right now in the, in their pace of play. So I think that should continue. And I'm going to attack Trey Young and his prop of over 10 and a half assists on this one. Cause I get plus money on FanDuel at plus one away for him to get 11. Like the, it, it was like minus 175 for him to get a double double. So they really, you know, want to make you take the, the 11 assists for him, but I still feel comfortable with that number, even though the 10 obviously would, somehow just make me feel a little bit better. Like he barely had to climb over double digits. Almost like sometimes guys just prefer to just get their, the, at least the double digit column and they're good. But I think he's going to be continuing to dime up. That's what he did all last season against Orlando. Uh, he's gone over in four of seven this season. He went over this in all four against Orlando last season, averaging 14 assists per game. As I believe you mentioned when you were talking about one of your best bets as well. Um, I think it's a lot to do with what I believe you talked about it as well, where, you know, Orlando's this pack it in team. They're going to make sure that like, you don't just get anything super easy at the rim. Meaning that when Trey gets into the lane, which he can do with pretty much ease when he's playing against uh, some, not necessarily slower, but just bigger, less quick than he is guards that, that play for uh, or, uh, Orlando. Even if Cole Anthony's out there, I still love Trey to just barbecue chicken at that point. 
Um, the, number seven in limiting points in the paint is Orlando. Number seven in, uh, in limiting three pointers. So they are going to like sort of allow you to get into that mid range uh, area of the court, and that's when Trey can keep going all the way to the basket, make the guy come to him, pass it off, boom. And, and now we're talking about either shooters on the wing or uh, in that low block for for um, Capella on like a short roll where he just gets a dunk at the at the basket, right? So that's that's how we how we look at this game whenever we talk about Trey Young playing against this style of defense, including like the Knicks when he does the same type of thing to them, lobbing it right over Mitch Rob uh, over to Capella. So I think we're going to see a lot of that. Cole Anthony is just going to get cooked in this one with Markel Fultz probably out and Gary Harris definitely out. Uh, it's going to be a lot of Anthony Black and, and Gary uh, and, and Cole Anthony trying to handle uh, Trey Young. And I'll go ahead and take Trey to get 11 assists in that situation. And because are you are you forecasting that that Suggs is going to be on Murray the whole game and they're not going to deploy Suggs on, on Trey Young? I don't think it matters. I mean, he, he was matched up against Trey in the I think they only played against each other one time last year. I was looking at the matchups for Trey, and he played. Well, he was guarding him for like six minutes of the game, and Trey still ended up with the thirteen assists. So like, yeah, six minutes exactly. I mean, Suggs is being deployed at a much higher rate, like nearly thirty minutes per game, and he is a good defender. So for me, it's I'm not really sure which which guard he's going to be on all game. For me, that's why I was a little more conservative looking at Trey assists. I would rather parlay twenty points and eight assists for him as like kind of the floor. Um, in this matchup, I do agree that he's he's going to be able to score against his Magic team. We talk in the best bets. I'm going 20 points for Trey and Dejounte in this game, um, <clears throat> and maybe in a Hawks win. But either way, I mean that that still gets you plus money if you just take the 20 points and you don't have to hope for 11 assists, which is just a little rich for my blood. Yeah, I mean I'm not I'm not sure why. Like the points have been there in two of the four games he played last season against basically the same squad. The assists are always there with the potential assists as well. I mean, I, he is shooting a lot. There's a high usage as well. I mean, he's just he's doing everything against them with the ball in his hands. So I, if you're worried about DeJanta taking some of this from him, I can understand that. But I do also think that there's something to the way that, that Quinn Snyder has established this offense that, like, dime up, Trey, because he's also done this in, in three of his last four. So we'll, we'll see. Like you said, they're getting into a groove with Atlanta. It's, it's not necessarily the easiest thing to predict like it might have been in the past, especially with DJM getting in there in the mix a little bit more. So we'll 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 continue to see how it goes. Only two games to watch tonight, or you can watch the Panthers and Bears if you want to watch the NFL. That's up to y'all. Uh, I think we'll be tuning back and forth. Maybe I'll go for a jog or something. I don't know. Either way, that's all the time we have for you. This one, continue to follow along. We are coming back to you guys tomorrow to finish up the week strong with a pretty nice big NBA slate. So until we see you next, happy betting.